Hey there, everybody. Travis Green now joined by Joe Rock, the Rockies' number 15 ranked prospect. Joe, first off, one heck of a name, Joe Rock. <laughs> do you get that often? People? I do. I've gotten Joe Rockies. I've gotten it all. Everything to rhyme with the Rockies. <laughs> Goes pretty perfectly it does. if you were drafted by. Mm -hmm. What was uh, the reaction when you got drafted by the Rockies, by the way? Uh, it was awesome. You know, like, I knew I was going to get picked on the second day. It was just a matter of when. And when I knew it was the Rockies, I knew they had a good program. And I knew the scout very well, so it was just a great feeling overall. Did, yeah, when it goes to draft days like that, when you fill out the teams, do you kind of know, hey, these teams are on my radar, these are guys that are probably going to wind up drafting me? Yeah, I had an idea. I mean, I wasn't quite sure, you know, other things had to come into play, but I knew it was going to come down to like three three teams, and I knew the Rockies were one of them, so it was just a matter of when they were going to take me. Right, and we just talked about it a little bit off camera, but just what's it been like, your first, uh, you know, full year of minor league ball here this season, what's it been like? Uh, it's been a great experience so far. You know, I'm getting a taste of professional baseball, and I'm doing above average, I would say. I mean, I could be doing a little bit better, but not doing my worst. So, you know, it's a good feeling to come out here and pitch like I know how to. <laughs> He's being modest. 3.03 ERA. He's, you're doing pretty dang good. <laughs> so, Joe, from you went to the Ohio University, not mm. the Ohio State. <laughs> what, what made you wind up going there, being from Pennsylvania? Um, so I was going basically for the schooling because I wanted to become a pilot and I knew, you know, becoming a professional in any sport is hard to do. So I wanted to have something to fall back on and they had a really good aviation program. So I want to go there, get a good education and then hopefully baseball will work out, which, which it turned out well. Gotcha. So in your back pocket is potentially being a pilot, it yes. sounds like. Yeah. What made you want to do that in the first place? Uh, just my family's all was in, uh, involved in aviation. My uncle's a pilot for Delta, and then my mom worked for American Airlines before for U.S. Air before it was American. Okay, so just a little family background made yeah. you interested in it. But uh, that doesn't happen. Baseball panning out. I'm sure you're happy to be doing that for the time. Oh yeah, it's a lot better than going to work every single day. I can tell you that. <laughs> well, Joe, uh, back when I talked, we were talking about you going to Ohio University. When you were there, I think it was your second start of the season through a no-hitter, right? Yeah. What was that like to just kind of explode onto the season that way? Uh, it was incredible. It was the weekend or the week after my mom passed away. So it was a you know a good feeling going out there and shoving and then just knowing that she was there with me. So it was like a kind of a bounce back and just a really good feeling overall. Wow, I didn't even know that aspect mm -hmm. of it. That had to mean meant a lot to you to go out there and yeah, do that. Yeah, it was awesome. It was just a great feeling overall. I'm sure. Uh, did that start in specific kind of put you on the radar for scouts? Uh, I would say summer ball did, but then I just knew like I had to carry summer ball over into the season, and that really put me out there because my name was you know getting thrown around for throwing the first no hitter that season. So then scouts started you know coming more and more to the games. So Joe, we talked about you got the great name Joe Rock, but you also are six foot six. There's a lot of intimidation going on here for you on the mound. Uh, how much does that help you pitching, being that tall? Uh, it's, a, it's a little bit of an advantage because I got long levers, so I could you know, really come over the top or drop down, which, you know, like as a shorter guy, they can't have my arms, so it's just a little bit of an advantage. Right, and for, for people that aren't huge on baseball, that kind of helps you hide the baseball a little longer. You get the extension, kind of jumps on batters a little more, right? Like, how much of an advantage is that for you as a pitcher? Um, I would say, you know, like me getting down the mound, I'm releasing the ball probably from 55, 56 feet, whereas another guy's releasing it from, you know, maybe 58 feet. So I'm getting a little bit further down the mound, which is um, makes it harder on the hitters to pick up the baseball. Right. And for you as a big lefty, are there any guys that you've, like, looked up to or gone back, watched their footage to kind of try to emulate? Yeah, I would say I've watched Chris Sell and, uh, like, a Josh uh, Hader, probably, I do just because, like, we move alike and we're the same height in general, so I could pick up some stuff from what they do. Gotcha. Did you kind of do the arm slot like them? Uh, at one point, but it just wasn't working out for me, so I just went back to what I was doing well at. Highest drafted pitcher in Ohio University history. What, what's that like for you to know that and kind of have that bragging right back there? Uh, it's a good feeling because, you know, it's a smaller school. It's not one of the Power 5 schools, so, you know, it shows other people that you can go to a smaller school and still get your name recognized and drafted, so you don't have to go to those big schools and think that you have to pass on an opportunity. Right. Right, Joe. So this season, we kind of talked about it a little bit. You have a three three oh eight ERA, thirty nine strikeouts, one one three WHIP, four two record. I mean, you said uh, I think you were selling yourself a little short there. You're off to a great season. What's it been like? Just and what maybe in specific is helping you get off to such a hot start here? I would just say finding a routine and just finding something that works best for me. You know, coming to the ballpark every day. It's not something I'm used to. You know, coming from college. So you know, just waking up, coming here, and just finding a routine and sticking to that and just letting the results play. 
Okay, Joe, here's something that I would like uh, to know, obviously, as a Colorado myself. I know Coors is a daunting field to pitch at. Um, elevation, all that, big outfield too. Uh, was there any like aspect in your mind when you got drafted of, oh man, this is gonna be a challenge um, to go and pitch there? I'm a little bit, because I know your stuff doesn't move as much as it would you know, down here, so you, know, you just have to learn how to pitch, basically, and that'll help you throughout your career, you know, just learning how to pitch every single hitter and play to disadvantages. So I feel like it just helps you become like an MVP type player. Is there something specific that the Rockies organization emphasizes pitching wise to help with that? Um, I would say change ups definitely as a pitcher because like your off speed pitches aren't going to move as much, but mm -hmm. you can never alternate like uh, like off speed. So if you're going to slow down a pitch, it's going to play just the same as it would, you know, in Pittsburgh as it would in Colorado. Have you gotten any, since you've been drafted, any advice from guys like Kyle Freeland or Ryan Rollison, lefties that have also gone through the organization? No, I haven't got to talk to them yet just because we haven't had a normal spring training or last year I was down in the right. complex. So this is like, I haven't really had a normal year yet. <laughs> well, kind of getting that now, right? Mm -hmm. There you yeah, go. Yeah, starting to get into it. There you go. All right, Joe, are you cool with doing a uh, little quick quiz on yeah, Spokane? for sure. How many questions do you want? Let's do three. Three? Oh, he's going for all three. All right. Let's see here. So, what annual holiday got its start right here in Spokane? I feel like I just read this somewhere. Holiday. Fourth of July? No. Uh, Father's Day. I was a little off, about two weeks off. Father's Day, it originated in Spokane. Sonora Smart Dodd, giving credit kind of for starting it all. Uh, her mother was passed away, and there was a Mother's Day already in place, but there wasn't a Father's Day. So <laughs> she said, hey, let's. Started Father's Day, so that's that's where they give credit for it. Um, next one for you. Okay, what year did Spokane host the World's Fair? 1974. Yep, Let's you go. got it. Did you remember that or remember hearing that from Drew? No, I think I read it somewhere. I've been doing a lot of reading lately, so I just come across uh, certain things. Heck yeah, you got it right. Ding, ding, ding. That's the first uh, we've gotten right so far. Come on. <laughs> Do you know what kind of ties together with that? No. The the U.S. Pavilion. Have you seen that in downtown Spokane? Yeah, I have. The big light. Yeah. So that was built for the World Fair. Okay. Pretty cool spot. All right, third one. Let's see. Okay. What does Spokane mean? Like, where does it get the name originate from, and what, what's its meaning? I know it means something from the sun, right? And a kid, and it ties back to the tribe. Boom. You got it, man. You, you're on a roll. So it means children of the sun after the Spokane tribe. Okay. You got it, man. It crushed it. <laughs> well, thank you, Joe. Yeah, I appreciate it.